What's up guys, in this video what I want to do is give you some simple tips to be able to complete the square when you have to factor out a coefficient as well as deal with fractions. Now one thing my mama always told me was if you're going to complete the square, you have to factor out your A. So that is the one thing I need you to know, is to factor out your A. But we have a problem with that, because factoring out an A in this problem is not usually as simplistic as students usually think about factoring out an A. But if you forget out about the A, just remember what A represents. A represents the coefficient of your x squared. Okay, so remember when we're dealing with you know quadratics and completing the square, we're talking about A, B, and C as the coefficients where C is gonna represent the constant. We also use that representation a lot with the quadratic formula. So it's very important to remember. When I gotta factor out that A, what that really means is I got to divide out that A. Now, there's a couple ways you can approach this, is you can divide that two by everything. And I actually, I like that approach, but I only like that approach when I want to be able to solve by completing the square. If I just want to rewrite something in vertex form, a lot of times what I like to do is factor it out. Your ability to be able to factor out and deal with fractions is going to be critically important in this problem. So let's go and just to kind of do a quick little review of like what I mean by factoring before we can go ahead and apply it to this problem. So remember, if I want to factor out like the GCF, which is one of those like first problems that we go ahead and factor out, I could have something that just looks like this, like a 2x squared plus a 4x. Right? And you might recognize, you say like, oh, I can factor out the x, right? Like the factor, you know, the x's are shared or the twos are shared. Now, once you're comfortable with factoring, that's really quickly, we just kind of say that. But what does that really mean that they both have them in common? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna further factor this out. So therefore we can understand why we're factoring out those values or at least how that looks. So instead of writing an x squared, I'm gonna write an x times x. Instead of writing a four, I'm gonna break that down to its prime factors of two times two. Okay, so now what I want you to see is this expression 2x squared is two times x times x, and this one is two times two times x, okay? So now what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna to wanna to compare these. And what we wanna do is be able to find like what is it that they have in common? Well, you can see here, these have a 2x, and these also have a 2x. So what I can say is like a 2x is in common here, and a 2x is in common there, right? So if I'm factoring them out, basically what I'm doing is I'm rewriting this expression, which is just an addition problem, as a product. So to rewrite it as a product, what you have to do is divide out this common factor, 2x, right? And then rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So let's go ahead and combine these together, put them on the outside of these parentheses now, which is gonna now take us with what's left over, right? If I take a 2x out of here, or better said, if I divide out a 2x, what's gonna be left over? 2x, right? Let's take it like this. 2x divided by 2x is just gonna leave me with an x. And then over here, a 2x or two times 2x divided by 2x is just gonna leave me with a positive two. Now, again, the whole idea of factoring, guys, is to rewrite an expression from addition, I'm sorry, a rewrite an expression, yeah, as a multiplication problem. Did I rewrite this as a multiplication problem? Yes, I did. Is this the same as my original? Well, again, you can always check your work with factoring, guys. Multiply it back out. So 2x squared plus a 4x. Now, why am I going through all of this work on factoring for something like this? Because Here's the problem, this works and it works really nicely when you're dealing with numbers that are easily divisible. But here's our problem, we have a five here, right? How am I going to do it now with this five? But if you understand this concept, you understand what we're doing, then hopefully it should make a little bit more sense of what we're doing and how we're going to be able to do it. So if I wanted to factor out a two x squared, let's just say plus a five x, if I'm factoring out a two, I can't break down five as a product of two, right? Five x is just already factored as a five x. So what I wanna do is think about this like, all right, so what did we technically do here? Well, we technically divided everything by a two x. So let's go ahead and do that again. Like let's divide this by two x, let's divide that by two x, and then rewrite it as what's gonna be left over. Okay, so if I have a two x squared divided by two x, right, which is the same thing over here, we know that answer is going to be an x. And then what about over here? If I have a five x divided by a two x, the x's will divide out, and what am I gonna be left with? A five halves. Now, does that make sense? And you gotta think to yourself, well, I'm not, maybe you're not sure, maybe it's like, I'm not really sure, like, then guess what? Let's multiply it back out just like we did over here. Multiply the two x times x, that's a two x squared. Multiply the two x times the five halves. The twos are gonna divide out and you're left with five times x, plus a five x. You're like, ah, whew, okay. So cool, we can do that. When you're factoring in a case like this, I just wanna factor out these two terms, the first two terms. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I just wanna focus on creating a perfect square trinomial of my first two terms. So let's go ahead and factor out the two, which we already did here, right? And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so now what we've done is we've created now a quadratic, right? And I'm gonna kind of little, put a little star here because what you wanna do is, again, what my mama said, is you can only complete the square when you have a quadratic where a is one, all right? So you cannot have a number in front. So you might recognize, say, well, what about that two? Well, no, that two is multiplied by everything in here, right? If you're looking inside this quadratic, like if we just get like tunnel vision here, Inside this quadratic, 
I now have an x with a coefficient of one. So we're good to go here. Now we can go ahead and complete the square. It gets a little fun here, right? So remember, completing the square, we gotta take our b divided by two. So we take a b divided by two and square it. Well, in this case, what is my b? It's a five halves divided by a two, right? And then we gotta square that. Okay, so now let's go and think about, look, well, how do we divide by two? How are we gonna go ahead and simplify, you know, something like that? Well, remember, dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half, right? You can, you can go ahead and rewrite this like this. So I can say a five halves divided by a two, right? And what I can do is multiply by one half on top and bottom. Because what happens here? When I take a two times one half, that takes me to a one. And then this is going to be a five fourths. So I technically have a five fourths squared and a five fourths squared is going to be a 25 over a 16. So 25 over a 16. So again, remember that is the number I'm gonna add inside these parentheses, which is gonna create a perfect square trinomial, but then also remember to subtract that value as well. So when we go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get a y equals a two times x plus five halves, x plus a 25 over 16 minus a 25 over 16, right? You gotta add and subtract. And then also don't forget the one, right? Students always forget the one, but don't do that. All right, so now we gotta do is be able to say, all right, well, how am I going to now factor this? It's pretty easy, like, you know, if it's y is equal to um, x squared, let's say, mm, I don't know, eight x plus 16, right? If that's a perfect square term, what two numbers multiply to give you 16, add to give you eight? And hopefully most students are like, oh, it's gonna be a x plus four times an x plus four, which is just going to be an x plus four quine squared. Right now, technically what we're really doing here is we're just taking our middle term, dividing it by two. Okay, so I want you to remember that rule here. Whatever your b divided by two is, that is going to be part of your binomial squared. So that's extremely important to recognize here when you have this. What was my b divided by two? Five fourths. So therefore this can be expanded down to an x plus five fourths quantity squared. And then here, I'm gonna rewrite this as a fraction, but I'm gonna rewrite, oh, I forgot the mistake. Did you catch it? Hopefully some people kind of commented. Notice, and sometimes I just get to talking and I forget about it. And I apologize, that happens all the time when I'm a teacher. <laughs> so remember, you didn't really add a 25 over two, 16, right? You added a 24 over 16, it's being multiplied by two. So guess what you have to do over here? You have to multiply this by two as well, okay? So therefore that's gonna simplify that to an eight to the denominator. So make sure you follow that rule. All right, so now what we can do is go ahead and simplify this to a five fourths. So that's gonna look like y equals. All right, so now what I did is I went ahead and um, factor this down, right? I just took the b divided by two. Since that's positive, that's gonna be positive. I had my factor out my two. I multiplied by two over here when I subtracted it. Um, I divided that out though. Two over 16 could reduce to a one over eight, right? So that's really now a negative 25 over eight. And then what I did is I rewrote the one as an eight over eight, right? Because if you wanna add a number to a fraction, you just wanna create your integer as a fraction. Therefore, I needed something in the denominator of eight. That's why I just rewrote this as eight over eight. And again, you can say it's like true, right? Eight over eight is the same thing as one. So we're good to go. So now I just need to add that up and negative 25 plus 18 is going to be a negative 17. And now I have my final answer. Now, this problem was pretty complicated and it involved a lot of steps. So if you need something that's a little bit simplified only through step-by-step, step, then go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here.